Hey everyone, it's Kristen from K Becca, and today I'm going to be testing some inexpensive gel pens to see how they perform as sketch pens for digital cutting machines. I've been using the sketch option on my Silhouette Cameo a lot more recently, but don't have a lot of gel pens to use with it, so I've been building my stash. I've also purchased some more expensive gel pens, and I'll talk about those more in upcoming videos. But today it's all about the cheap gel pens. I bought this set of Smart Color Art gel pens on Amazon.com. The set includes 80 different gel pens plus refills for each, and the pens range from glitter to metallic, pastel, neon, and standard colors. There are lots of similar sets on Amazon for around the same price point. I got this set for $17.99, and I chose this particular brand because it has a lot of positive reviews, and I like the range of colors and finishes in the set. When you open the package, the pens are in four different trays, which are labeled on the side with numbers 1 to 4. The package of refills also has numbered labels, which should make it easier to find the pen that goes with the correct refill when the time comes. I'm going to scribble out a small swatch of ink from each pen onto white cardstock and black cardstock to get a better idea of how they look on a light versus a dark background. I labeled each piece of cardstock with row numbers to match the tray numbers on the pens so I can keep everything straight. And I'll swatch out the colors on the cardstock from left to right in the same order that they're in in the trays. The first tray has the glitter colors. I really like the range of glitter colors in this set, and I hope you can see that they have a pretty decent glittery payoff when I hold the white cardstock at an angle. They're not super glittery, but I was happy with the glitter level. On the black cardstock, I was expecting the colors to be more opaque, so I was a little bit surprised when the only one that showed up really well on the black was the silver color. On the other colors, you can see the glitter really well, but the color itself is more subtle and the colors aren't opaque at all. The second tray has mostly metallics, but there was one color that was kind of this weird, kind of milky, non-metallic red that took forever to dry. It's the seventh swatch from the left. Also, the first color on the tray, which is a nice shade of blue, was not metallic. On the black cardstock, these are definitely more opaque than the glitter pens in the first tray, but they weren't quite as opaque as I hoped they'd be. That strange red pen dried to a kind of a milky look on the black, but the blue pen that was the first swatch on the left was hard to see. The third row has a mix of neons, some regular colors I think, and a few shimmery metallic colors toward the right side of the tray. I was disappointed that the first three pens that I swatched in this row were scratchy and kind of dry, especially the neon yellow that's the third swatch from the left. Hopefully the refills for those pens will be better, but the pinks and reds were super juicy. These are toward the center of the row, and the neon pinks and reds are some of my favorite colors from the set. While I really like how the neons and pretty much all of the colors in this row look on the white cardstock, again, I was disappointed that they weren't more opaque on the black cardstock. You can still see them though, so they're more opaque than the glitter pens from the first row, but generally less opaque than the metallics from the second row. There is a metallic silver that's the next to last swatch from the right that is the most opaque from this row. The last row was the row that I had the highest hopes for because I love the milky pastel rainbow of colors. The purples, reds, and pinks on the left side of the row look great on white cardstock, and I really like the shades of blue on the right side of the row too, but I had some problems with the yellows and greens especially. They tended to be on the dry and scratchy side, and I really had to use a lot of pressure to get those to show up. On the black cardstock, these are probably my biggest disappointment from the set because while they were milky and opaque, they were pretty streaky and not nearly as opaque as I would have liked. Overall, I think my favorite row in the set is the first row, which has all of the glitter pens. I really like the range of colors that were included, and the subtle glitter effect is really nice. I also like a lot of the metallic pens from the second row, and the pink and red neons from the third row. The fourth row was the biggest disappointment for me, but I do really like the range of colors. I just wish they were more opaque and less streaky. Next, I'm going to use some of the pens to test out how well they perform as sketch pens for my Silhouette Cameo machine. I chose a pen from each row that I thought would do well, and I set up a file in Silhouette Studio with a few different sketch designs to test. I have a sentiment, a large snowflake, and a small snowflake to see how well the pens do with smaller details. I set each group of sketch designs with a different line color so I can sketch by line color when I send the files to the machine. I added a pause between each row color so I can change out my pens at the pause and then unpause and continue sketching with the next color. 
If you're interested in seeing a video about how I set up these types of files for sketching with multiple pen colors, just let me know in the comments below. Over at my machine, I have my pen holder loaded. I use the Chomas Creations metal holder and love it. It's a bit of an investment, but it's been more than worth it for me because it offers so much flexibility and holds lots of different types of pens and markers. I'll slide a wood craft stick under the tool holder before placing my pen into the holder just until it barely touches the stick. Then I'll tighten the screw on the side of the holder, remove the stick, and go over to my computer and press send to send the first group of designs to sketch. When the first group is sketched, the machine will pause so I can remove the first pen and place the next pen into the holder, again using the popsicle stick as a guide. Once it's loaded, I'll go back over to my computer, remove the pause, and resume sketching with the next group. I'll repeat this for all four pens that I'm testing. Overall, these pens perform pretty well with the sketch designs. I used the aqua glitter pen from the first row for the first group, and it looks great. There aren't any blank areas where the ink cut out, and it did very well with the details of the smaller snowflake too. The second pen was the silver metallic pen from the second row in the set, and it also did a great job. No spotty ink areas at all, and it did really well with the details on the smaller snowflake too. The third group was sketched with the bright neon pink pen from the third row, and it did really well with the sentiment in the larger snowflake, but there is one little blob of ink on the larger snowflake, and there are a couple of areas on the smaller snowflake where the ink coverage is spotty to non-existent. Finally, I used the pastel pink pen from the fourth row in the set for the last group of designs. This one did well on the sentiment in the smaller snowflake, but there was an area on the larger snowflake where the ink coverage was spotty. Overall, I think these pens did pretty well on the white cardstock. The last two had some issues with ink spottiness, but to be honest, this will happen from time to time with many brands of pens, so I didn't think this was too bad at all. Next, I tested four of the pens on the black cardstock. I switched out all of the pens except the pink one from the last row so I could try some different colors that I thought had a good chance of showing up well on the black cardstock. The sketching process and file that I used are the same as for the white cardstock. Let's talk about the last row first. The pastel pink pen that I used for this was the same one that I used for the white cardstock and this time around there were no areas with spotty ink. It did a great job on all of the designs. I do still wish that it was more opaque, but as far as performance, it gets a thumbs up. The other three rows also turned out great. I used a silver glitter pen from the first row, a blue metallic pen from the second, and a light purple metallic pen from the third row. No spottiness with the ink at all. Overall, I think that these pens performed well, especially at the under $20 price point for the set. Their performance was better than I expected it to be, and I definitely would purchase this again. The range of colors is really nice, and there were only a few pens in the bunch that were kind of dry and streaky, and I'm hoping the refills for those pens will be better. I really like how most of the colors show up on white paper, but if you tend to use black or darker colored cardstock for sketch designs, I don't know that I'd recommend this particular set since none of the colors, even the milkier ones, are super opaque. Of all the pens, the second tray with the metallics shows up best against black, but I don't know that it would be worth it to purchase the whole set just for these ones. Before I go, I just want to quickly mention that I didn't have any problems with dry time on the pens that I used for sketching. I didn't notice any color coming off onto the roller coils on my machine, and there was no smearing at all. I'll have photos of all of the pen swatches over on my blog, and you can find the link to that, as well as a full list of supplies used in the video in the description area below, or in the area below the video if you're watching on kbeka.com. If you like this video and would like to see more sketch pen projects, it would be great if you give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll tune in again soon.